Hi everybody, Dan Ullman taking a look at the guaranteed mandatory payout on the Rainbow Six at Santa Anita on Sunday. Races five through 10 comprise this sequence. The minimum wager is 20 cents for this Rainbow Six and there's going to be likely a gigantic pool for us to all chase. We'll talk about some of these races in detail, beginning with race number five, approximate post time, 120 Pacific. It's a $30,000 maiden claimer featuring some first time starters. So you might wanna check out the board, see if there's any tote board buzz on some of these first time starters, get a look at them in the paddock, see how they're doing, because if you see a first time starter, maybe from an under the radar barn taking some money or a horse in the race even that's lightly raced taking some money, you might want to include those horses on your tickets. As of right now, I have one A, one B, and one C. My A is the number three Mayan warrior who might end up the favorite in this race as he was last time out on September the 28th. That was a race in which he bobbled very badly at the start and was last and wide on the back stretch. Giovanni Franco was able to angle him down towards the inside on the turn, and he came with a sustained run to finish third, his buyer speed figure equaling the par for this level. He is now dropping from 40 to 30, from six furlongs to five and a half furlongs, and Doug O'Neill's been doing very well at this meet. I think if Mayan Warrior runs his last race, barring a quick firster, he is way the horse to beat. My B horse is one of those first time starters. That's the number one Irish polo. His size Sire Drosselmeyer wanted to run all day long. It makes me wonder if five and a half furlongs is going to be this one's cup of tea. The dam has fold three winners from three runners, however, and Peter Miller does excellent work with first time starters. You're gonna to wanna to keep an eye out on Saturday's seventh race because Irish Polo's workmate on many occasions, Damiano, is making his career debut for Miller. If that horse runs well, you might want to include Irish Polo or even upgrade him to an A on your Rainbow Six tickets. My number C is another Another first time starter, that's the 11 Diamond Blitz, and you very rarely get some buzz on first time starters in maiden claiming races, but Diamond Blitz worked a bullet back on October the 20th in 113 and change for six furlongs. He's a half to a debut winner. He is bred more for speed than the other first time starter. I think Diamond Blitz, four to one on the morning line. There's been some buzz on him. If he does take some early money, you might want to move him up in your rankings on Ticketmaker as well. So my Ticketmaker plays for the first leg of the rainbow. A uh, is number three, my B is number one, my C is number 11. Race number six, we're going down the hill at about six and a half furlongs. It's a $50,000 claiming race. I've got three A's and one B. Number one, Tizabilly just blasted $25,000 claimers last time out on the front end, and he looks like the speed once again, although he is hiking all the way up to the $50,000 tag. I have to use him based off of his last race. The number six, Jan's Reserve, is 20 to one on the morning line, but the last time he ran on the turf way back in June going down the hill, I thought he ran very well. He was prompting the pace from three wide, battled on the turn, and was only beaten three quarters of a length by home run kitten while finishing ahead of a couple of next out winners. I think at a big price, Jan's reserve off the Victor Garcia claim might acquit himself at big odds. But I think that the horse they're all going to have to beat is a horse that I've chased for a long time without much success. It's the three perfectly majestic who has nine seconds and 12 thirds some 34 lifetime starts but in his most recent effort his first start off the Peter Miller claim he did not have a good trip going a mile against better company now winners of two other than optional claimers breaking from post position 10 in that two turn route he was four wide around both turns and was still fighting hard at the end to finish in a dead heat for second he has run well going down the hill in the past and if Tiza Billy faces some company on the front end I think perfectly majestic will be rolling late he's my third a my lone B is the number two Placido, who was making his third start off an extended layoff for a good trainer in Simon Callahan. And you can argue he's had a little bit of trouble in both of his races. His first start at Del Mar on August the 25th, he was bumped several times coming out of the gate, was far back down towards the inside, had to alter up the rail in mid-stretch and finished a good second while galloping out well. And then last time out as the favorite, it looked like he clipped heels as he crossed the dirt patch, turning into the stretch in that down the hill race. And then he finished evenly. That 89 buyer from two starts back, I think he can build off of, and Placido as a backup at six to one 
can be used in this mandatory Rainbow Six wager. My A is one, three, and six. My B at number two. Race number seven is a $20,000 maiden claimer on the main track at six and a half furlongs. I have two A's, one B, and a C. My A's are the eight Pastorelli and the 11 for the hustle. Pastorelli last time out made his dirt debut in a $32,000 maiden claimer for Richard Baltus. He got the pace scenario he needed, but it was nice to see him rally in a live race. The runner-up came back to graduate with an 80 buyer speed figure. Pastorelli now drops in for 20, and if there's some pace in this race, he's going to come flying late under Joel Rosario. As for for the hustle, he's over seven now, and he doesn't have a lot of stamina, but last time out, he found seven furlongs way too fa far, especially after going a legitimate pace up front in his first start off a long layoff. He held on for second at 11 to one that day, and one of the also-rans came back to graduate with a 66 buyer speed figure. He continues to work in very fast fashion for this race, and I would be very surprised if Edward Maldonado doesn't have him on the lead. He could be the one to catch. My B is the number six powerful Thirst, who's earned solid figures in his career, but has had 15 tries to break his maiden to no avail. You have to wonder if he just needs everything to go his own way in order to win, but his figures put him in the mix. And my C is going to be a big long shot, the number two Salute Loot, who made his career debut for $40,000 tag for Mike Pipe, didn't break very well, was hung up behind a slow pace and never fired. I think it's too early to give up on this son of Midnight Loot. I'll use him as my only deep backup. My A's are 8 and 11. My B is a six. My C is two. Number eight is uh, race number eight is the Grade Two Twilight Derby. It is your DRF.com race of the day, which means you can access free Formulator Pass performances on the race of the day event page at DRF.com. You can also access my video preview of that race. I've given you all those horses in detail in that video. So for Rainbow Six purposes, I'm going to use the two Prince Earl, a perfect two for two in his career for Phil D'Amato. The number eight River Boyne, who I was the only part of the pace to be hanging around at the end of the recent Grade 2 Del Mar Derby and could be the speed of this race. Those are my two A's. My B is the 9 Platinum Warrior, who, if he does get a fast and contested pace, should be rolling from the back of the pack as he makes his first start for John Sadler. Drayden Van Dyke takes the mount. Race number 9 is an optional claimer at one mile on the main track. I got two A's and two B's. The number 2 Lord Guinness finished second last time out, and the fourth place finisher of that race came back to win with an 89 buyer speed figure. That was sheer flattery. Lord Guinness is in good form for trainer Bill Morey. He's hit the board in his last four races, and he acts like he appreciates distance. I think he can sit a decent mid-pack trip and is adaptable to the pace. The six surfing star certainly appreciated his first start around two turns, improving his buyer by 20 points. He now makes his second start of the form cycle, and while he's facing open foes for the first time, there's always been a little bit of buzz about surfing star. I think he has some ability, although he might have to do it a different way. There are other speeds in this race. The seven paddock pick is an interesting performer. I'm not sure how far paddock pick wants to go, and he's only one for 11 in his career, but in that Lord Guinness race last time out, he was the horse that did all the work, setting some legit legitimate fractions before tiring late. He is going to cut back a sixteenth of a mile here, and I wonder if he'll sit off the pace if Surfing Star decides to go or one of these other horses. He did prove rateable three starts back sprinting. Paddock pick at eight to one coming off of that really tough situation on a fast pace and still hanging around is worth a gamble. The four Pleasant Dioro is a beautifully bred son of Medallia Dioro who is really yet to live up to his potential, but last time out at a mile he beat a weak field at even money and he can sit off the pace. I'll use him as a backup simply because of his upside. It's too early to give up on a pedigree like this. My A's in race number nine are two and six. My B's are four and seven. And it doesn't get any easier for the anchor leg of this mandatory payout in the Rainbow Six. One mile on the turf, made in special way two-year-olds, many of these horses trying turf for the first time. I've got two A's, three B's, and a C. My two, Neptune Storm, is a first-time gelding. After finishing an even fifth in a very fast turf race on September the 29th, I think he can get another good trip breaking from post position two, and with this capable apprentice on, he gets some weight off. The number four, Farquhar, has got a big pedigree. He's a half to a graded stakes winner on the turf. I wish the one that Natalma is a two-year-old named Northern Passion. First time for Vladimir Sarin, blinkers on, Lasix on. 
didn't think he ran badly in his debut going a mile. Not easy for two-year-olds to debut at that distance at Gulfstream Park. Saren has had him in the program now. I think Farquhar is going to do a lot better with that race under his belt out in Southern California. My Bs are the 8, 9, and 10. Leader of men's, a first-time starter by Warfront out of a grade 2 place dam. She was grade 2 place going long on the turf. While she's thrown a lot of good dirt horses like grade 1 stakes winners, executive privilege, and opportunity, that Warfront on top indicates the leader of men should handle the turf. The nine Knights Cross improved last time out uh, in that maiden special weight that featured Neptune Storm. He's got some experience. He really hasn't done anything special, but Keith DeZormo saw enough to throw him in a stakes race two starts back, and he switches to Flavie and Pratt. Eight to one on the line offers a little bit of value. The 10 Northwestern's a first-time starter by Medallia Dioro, and the Dan was a multiple stakes winner on the turf. I respect Tom Proctor with these kind of horses, and he should be a, a decent price. And my deep back up is the number three weekly call. The dam won the grade one Delmar Oaks, and this horse ran okay in a $100,000 maiden claimer on turf on October the 14th. I wonder if he takes up the running with the number six diff, and maybe he'll be the one to catch. Two and four my A's, eight, nine, and 10 my B's. The C is the number three. To recap the mandatory rainbow six ticket thus far, race number five, my A is three, B is one, C is 11. Race number six, A, one, three, six, B, two. Race number seven, A, eight and 11, B, six, C and two. Race number eight, A, two and eight, B, nine. Race number nine, A, two and six, B, four and seven. And race number 10, what a doozy. A, two and four, B, eight, nine and 10, C, Three. Should be a gigantic pool in play on Sunday at Santa Anita. We kick off this mandatory payout Rainbow Six with race number five, approximate post time of 120 Pacific. Best of luck.